and sparkling episode of Name That Wine. I'm Rob Frisch, writer of the award-winning wine blog, oddbuckus.com. And I'm Liz Barrett. I'm a certified specialist of wine, and I write the blog called What's in That Bottle.com. And we have our first international guest on um, Name That Wine. It's very exciting. Pauline, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so I'm Pauline Lott. Uh, I'm the winemaking director for Shandong. So you said yes, I'm international because I grew up in France, uh, but I've been working for Shandong for the last 12 years. Um, I'm now in charge of uh, making those, uh, those bubbles. So Which is amazing. It Which sounds is, like the best job in the world. It's the best right? job ever. It's the best job To ever. live in Napa Valley and make Shandong. Thank you for coming to us. You're welcome. Yes. Here in Chicago. And just a little background, Domaine Chandon was the first yes. French outpost in California to make sparkling wine, brought to you from the famous French champagne house Moet and Chandon, which is super cool. And there's a big anniversary this year, right? Is it the 45th? 45th? 45th year. 45th anniversary. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And I will say, Chandon is my go-to sparkling wine just when I'm in the shop. I know it will always be a crowd pleaser and something that I will also enjoy. Right. If you yeah. just need some bubbles on a Monday night, that's exactly it. For the yeah. yeah. The I mean, Chandon is the choice. I serve it at my Saturday night parties. Well, exactly. <laughs> It goes high and it goes low. Right. So, Colleen, you have bought three fantastic sparkling wines today. We do not know which is which, and we're going to sort of taste through them while we talk to you, which means we're going to be like, oh my gosh, thinking and drinking and talking. Do you think we're going to do that? I'm usually much better at either thinking or drinking, but I'm willing to try both at once. We're going to start talking into the mix, too. Oof. <laughs> so, what wines do we have here today? All right, so we just brought three um, because we have more than that. We have a rosé and other wines, but today we have a signature wine from Chenon, which is the Chenon Brut. Um, we brought the Blanc de Noir and we brought the Sweet Style. Okay. So let me explain you um, what those wines are. Yeah. So the, the Brut Classic is a band of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Meunier, which is a three traditional grapes we're using to craft our um, sparkling wine. Chandon we make wine with a traditional method, so that means that the, how we make the how we get the bubbles is from doing a secondary fermentation um, in the bottle, and that's what all of the domain Chandon. All of them are traditional method. Okay, that's correct. Yes. That. So that's that's the difference between, uh, for example, lighter sparkling wines such as Prosecco, which the method is a Chandon method, so the fermentation is made in tanks. Where us it's made in the in the bottle, so it takes us a minimum of two years um, to craft one um, sparkling bottle. And that method leads to more precise bubbles, doesn't it? Uh, more precise bubbles. It's about elegance. Um, it's about complexity as well because you're getting a lot of time on the yeast, which is giving like a lot of um, biscuits um, uh, is on that like a nanny yeasty character. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So the style of Chandon is really about having a California style. So we want to have brightness in the glass. Um, it's very important that we make a wine that is you know truly dedicated about California. And when you think about California, you typically think about you know nice weather. So you want to have vibrancy and 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 fruit uh, fruit intensity in your glass while having a good complexity coming from the method, so the traditional method. So the brut, a blend of all three variety, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and, and Meunier, it's about having crisp, uh, great acidity uh, in the in the palate. Then I brought the Blanc de Noir. So Blanc de Noir, what it means, it's white out of black. So that means that we're using only the two red grapes uh, to make the sparkling wines. So that means it's only a blend of shot of. <laughs> of course, that's the only one we're not putting in the blend. Uh, so a Pinot Noir and Meunier, so the two red grapes. Ah. Why are we able to make a clear sparkling wine with two red variety? Because this, the skin is actually where the color comes from. And we're doing very careful, we pick at night when it's cold, then we rush the grapes to the presses and we do a very gentle pressing so we don't extract color. Mm. Uh, so this one, this wine will have more uh, red fruit character, uh, red fruit flavors, a little bit of spice, and then the main difference will be like the structure because Pinot Noir brings more structure into the wine, so it will be a little bit more weight, a bit more uh, structure uh, than than the brut, but it's still very crisp um, um, and long length uh, in the finish. Oh my God! And You're so good. <laughs> 
freaking delicious. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. tell us about the sweet the sweet stars. I'm very curious is about that, the sweet um, stars. A new, never... Is that a new one? It is a it is a new one. Yes, we launched it a few years ago now. Um, so sweet star. It was designed uh, for people that like to sip a little sweeter. On the on the fruit, it's about more like tropical fruit. Again, that that intensity and that vibrancy on the nose. Uh, and then, as its name entails, it's a touch sweeter. Um, so you have a lot um, a lot of roundness, sweet, sweetness in the palate. Mm. It's designed to drink as is. It's also a wine that you can do uh, a cocktail with. So you pour your, your sparkling, you add some ice cube. And a garnish, which could be mint, grapefruit, um, you know, um, pill. It could be uh, cucumber, and then and then you just have a cocktail done in like five seconds. Oh my gosh! That's so easy, and yeah. that's very classy when you have the peel, the grapefruit peel, or the mm. orange peel, whatever, in your right. glass yeah, for a right. guest. You know, it immediately makes it look festive and fun and beautiful. Exactly. We, mm. love, we love making cocktails, yes. And that's really <laughs> fun. So having a wine that is so versatile and you can do both, yeah, yeah it's great. So when you moved, because you grew up in Champagne. I did, yes. So when you moved to California mm -hmm. to work at a sparkling winery, mm -hmm. were your friends and family like, Oh, hooray, good for you! Or were they like, California, those barbarians? Are you crazy? What, what was the response? Um, I mean, so for me, I, I went to California for a three months internship. So it's not that I never anticipated, um, you know, doing a career or uh, staying long in California at all. Um, to tell you the truth, um, it was, I've got two big brothers that have been in the U.S. before me. So it was, you know, following um, what my brothers have done. And, and it was a way of improving my English. And then really like, um, because you know, I came from Champagne, so I was like, um, I'm not gonna learn anything. And then I arrived in California and it was a total different experience. Like, uh, really opened my mind, um, learned about the California, the diversity of the terroir, and I was blown away just by Napa and, 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 um, and, and the region itself. Really early on, I had the great responsibility at the winery. Um, I was just 23, so for me it was very exciting. Um, and then, you know, um, took more responsibility, and then eight years later, <laughs> I was still there, and I got promoted to winemaker. So, um, so it's great. it's been yeah, it's been great. What are some of your favorite food pairings with sparkling? For me, um, sparkling wine is a is a wine that is extremely versatile. So you can pair with a lot of different things. But you should also pair it with simple food of food that you eat every day. The roots definitely with salad, calamari, crab cakes, um, fish, things like that. Rosé, um, we don't have it today, but like burgers and rosé is like delicious. Oh, yeah, that's inspiring. Yeah. Uh, um, sweet star with anything that is spicy, so tacos, um, Thai food, oh, yeah. um, sushi, I love that idea. sushi, even dessert. And then, and then blanc de noir is, is the same thing, like a you know, richer dish, mm. even with um, pork, a lamb. I like the pork idea especially. That makes me super hungry yeah. for some good Bubbles like, just make everything more fun. They really do. Yeah. You know, people think of, of sparkling wine just for New Year's or maybe mm -hmm. an anniversary or something. I love it all the time. All I mean, the time. What? Every day. I drink it every day if I could. And well, sometimes I do. <laughs> And I will note, I am an advocate of drinking sparkling wine, whether it's champagne or Prosecco or California sparkling, out of a wine glass instead mm -hmm. of a flute. Yes. Because I think you can get, you get more of the nose. I totally agree with you. So you, you know, you get to um, look at it, obviously you can see the bubbles, but most importantly, you can, you can smell it. Don't be afraid to stir it as well. That's not a problem. I mean, don't do it. All night long because the bubbles are gonna right. um, go away. But yes, I prefer. I definitely prefer wine glasses as opposed to flutes. Yeah. Or sometimes you have flutes um, that are, you know, has like a nice um, wide yes. on the top, and then that's that's totally okay. But the one that is super very narrow, it makes mm. it very difficult to really enjoy and taste. I prefer those for really cheap sparkling wine. <laughs> then it makes it look fancy, and people can't really smell what they're getting. Well, that's so what you get to your friends who really don't know what they're drinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I see this in the store here sometimes. The brute for maybe fifteen dollars, mm -hmm. even fourteen, if I'm really lucky with a good sale, sixteen, seventeen. That is a deal, considering yeah. the work that goes into it and the quality yeah. of the bubbles. 
and the balance. Right. I think I know which is which. What about you? Uh, well, I think I know which is which too. I know one of them for sure. <laughs> Do you? I all right, mean, so you, all right. Okay, hit it. What, all right. Okay, A. Blanc de Noir. Yes. <laughs> Shut the shut up. Oh. We're going to do the whole thing, I bet. All right. Okay. But you, you say this. This is the brute. Brute. The center. And this is the sweet star. Sweet star. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's A. A is Chandler. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Oh, thank God. I was so nervous because Pauline was like, this tasting is going to be so easy. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. I better not screw and this up. We're, with a B is the brute, which means the Dude. Last one. We're like three for three. This has never happened. That is extremely rare to name that wine. <gasps> Mark this episode bottle. down. Look how pretty this bottle is. Oh, that's very pretty. That, that is, would be so fun to bring to a party. That is right? stunning. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. When we were reading about the Sweet Star and all this, I'm like, oh, sweet. I was I extremely know. skeptical. But it's absolutely gorgeous. Right, because it's balanced. Not too that's, sweet. It's, that's the key. The balance is the key. And, so and nice. not having a finish that is too sweet. So right. it gives you like a dryness in the finish and makes you want yeah. to have a second guess. Well mm -hmm. done. Absolutely. I, let's have a toast let's to you. Let's have a toast to you and your fantastic sparkling wine making skills. Yes, so thank congratulations. You. Thank, thank you for joining us. Cheers. And thank you to Spaces for hosting us for this episode of Name That Wine. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.